Hello and welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. So <clears throat> today I, I I want to go ahead and do like a comparison, you know, contrast VS Code and Visual uh, Studio. Okay, like in, in all of my videos, especially the ones about C Sharp and .NET, you'll see that I'm mostly recording the videos on Windows with the Visual Studio 2022 Community Edition. That's what I normally do the, the, the <clears throat> uh, teaching and recording, all that happens on that. Now, however, at the same time, I do go ahead and mention that, yes, you can um, go ahead and, um, I mean, as always, please go ahead and, uh, you know, follow me on GitHub and um, uh, the, the, my website and, of course, the email and everything um so right then so yeah um so the idea is you know you can run all the projects that i'm sharing on either on vs code or visual studio now if you're on windows machine like me then yes definitely you have the option of running the projects on vs code and also on visual studio at the same time if you're on a mac and you know if you are you know, using Linux or something, then obviously your only option is VS Code because there used to be a version of Visual Studio for Mac computers, you know, which, like, which was essentially you know, Xamarin Studio, which was rebranded. It wasn't the same thing, feature to feature and all that. So it was a completely different beast with the same brand name. But luckily, um, you know, Microsoft put that out of its misery and completely retired it this year somewhere a few months ago. So that's good actually, because even though it had the same name, it wasn't really the same. So anyway. So yeah, so so I thought, you know, I of course, <clears throat> I'm from the old days. I started coding way back, you know, in the year 2000. So now it's 2024. So some 24 years ago, I started coding. And obviously, the first taste back then, IDEs were all the rage. Even now, of course, now IDEs are not the rage, you know. Like, for example, I mean, I use Visual Studio, but most people do the development just using the editors and stuff like that. And obviously, when I do JavaScript, React.js and things like that, I don't have an editor. I have to use the, I don't have an IDE. I have to use an editor and so on. <clears throat> but still, it might be worth, uh, I thought it will be fun to just go ahead and see how easy or difficult it will be for me to try and do things on VS Code. So that's what this video is about. So my plan is very simple. I'm going to try and create a console project. And then I'm going to try and create a web API project. Now, I do use VS Code. I mean, some of my clients are on Mac computers, in which case I have to get my Mac computer out of storage and teach them C Sharp on a Mac. So I have used it. But still, I just want to, you know, for those who might be curious, okay, so let's go ahead and give it a try. So first step, what I'm going to do is let me go ahead and um, uh, let me fire up. Yeah, let me just go ahead and first let me start with Visual Studio. So let's say I want to create a console project. Very easy. I just open it up. It's all click, 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 create a new project. Uh, it's already here, console app, click next. And then I'm going to go to my desktop here. And then I'm going to say uh, to delete September 16. It's already there. And I'm going to say console app, hello world, Visual Studio. And then I'm just going to say next. And then I'm going to say create. All right, then. So there you go. So the console project is already there. And I can just say build, rebuild. And I run this. And I got the output. So that's. For me, that feels very natural because I started in Visual Studio so many years ago. So that's the, how it would work in Visual Studio. Now let's try the same thing on VS Code. Now I don't know the steps, so I'm gonna have to use some help. From, so what I'll do is I'll go online and let me try and find the steps here. So I'm going to say, um, you know, VS Code console uh, project Okay, so there you go. So I have the article here. Okay, I'm going to put this article in the, um, you know, in my uh, video description. Okay, so let's see. Let's see. So it says I'm on .NET 8. So let's go ahead and open up VS Code. Um, now I'm here. Now let's go ahead. And what I want to do is, um, okay, so it says create start Visual Code open folder. Okay, and then let's go ahead and do that. So file, open folder, and then I'm going to say desktop to delete September 16. So I'm going to create the same thing here. So I'm going to call this console app. Uh, 
hello world vs code so so there you go that's the first step all right just following the tutorial and then it says you have the hello world now the next thing it says i have to have the c sharp extension installed so let's go ahead um there's something called c sharp dev kit extension they don't want they don't want us to use that so i just want i just need the c sharp extension so let's go ahead and check if it's already there I don't have it, it's neither installed nor disabled. So I'm going to go and click on install here. Let me see how easy it'll be. Always allow, open, and there it is. Okay, I'm going to say C sharp install. It's doing something. I'll remove it after the, at the end of the video because I don't plan to use this uh, for daily usage, for daily coding. I'm gonna stick to my favorite friend Visual Studio. But for the sake of the video though, so it's installing, it's doing something. We are going to wait for it. It might take a while. I'm gonna grab my snacks, you know. Uh, still installing. You can see on the top top left corner there is a small loading thing going on. So we are just going to wait for that. And it seems to be done, so that's good. Uh, to be on the safer side, I'm going to reload this window anyway. So I have the folder. Let's see what is the next step. The next, I'm going to put this link also in the video description, right? So in case you're trying to follow along. Okay, that's done. .NET SDK. Uh, I think it's already installed, right? I believe it is already installed. Now, how do I check? Um, let me see, check .NET version, uh, let me see, terminal. Let me see .NET. Okay, uh, .NET version. Oh, okay, here we go. .NET dash dash version. Okay, let's see .NET dash dash version. Ah, I, I'm already on 8.0, so that's good. So that step is fine. So we have taken care of the prerequisites. VS Code installed and um, you know, uh, C Sharp extension is installed and .NET gate SDK is also installed. So that is good. So now we have created the folder. Uh, trust the folder is fine. I need to go and I have to say use program main. So there you go. There's a command here. It's easy to copy page. Just put it in the terminal and press enter. Uh, yes, it's done. It's done. And then all I have to do is already have program.cs. That seems to be fine. Now what I need to do run the app is .NET run. So I'm going to go here, required assets to build, add them, yes. Some assets are being built and added. So that is done, I think. So now to run it, I have to say .NET run. It's doing something. Ah, there we go. Hello world. It worked, it wasn't that hard, right? It wasn't that hard, it seems to be working. Okay, so that part is fine. So there you go, that's how you can go ahead and do a, a console project on Visual Studio and also VS Code. So, okay, not, not bad at all. Okay, now let's go to the next one. So I wanna create a simple web API project on Visual Studio and VS Code. So let's move on to that. As always, let me first start with the purple one. I'm going to close this solution. I'm going to say create a new project. I remember this, I've been looking at this for at least 15 years, if not, uh, more. Uh, I'm going to say click next and here I'm going to say um, web API hello world uh, visual studio just like last time following the same naming scheme. Okay it says .NET long term support everything looks okay click on create good 
uh, build rebuild okay that part is done now let's go ahead and run it and swagger should come up any second now ah there it is very easy so i can just go and say try it out and i'm going to say execute and i have swagger working just fine so so far so good again very easy for me because this is what this is the ide i've been using for a long time so that part is cool so let's go ahead and stop this and now let me go ahead and try to use this so how do i go ahead and create a okay let me find an article for web api so vs code web api dot net in vs code okay let's find the official microsoft okay there we go we found it let's go ahead and click on we're trying to do this in visual studio code there it is okay so let's put this link also in the video description uh okay prerequisites i have the visual studio code done c sharp of visual studio code done dot net adsdk that part is fine so we already got the console project working so we should be okay so this is what we have to do so we have to go to the specific folder though so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to my uh create a new folder and I'm going to go to desktop. Here it is to delete September 16th. And here I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to reuse the name here. It's fine. And I'm going to say VS Code. Cool. Now inside, they are asking me to open VS Code and the terminal inside this. So I've got the terminal running. Now let's get back to it. Let's go ahead and there it is. Now what I need to do is I have to use this command dot net uh, web API use controllers dash oh maybe i should have tried using this one but let me see i i already have the folder so i don't i don't have i need i don't need that command let's see Ooh, it's working okay that was pretty, pretty fast okay uh add a new git package uh that is asking me to add a new git package i don't really know if i need it so they're asking me to do some certificate thing so let me do that uh, there's also the weather front oh, weather for uh, controller is already there. There we go. Trusting successfully trusted. Okay. The next thing what I want to do is HTTP profile. Okay. Let's do that. It's building. It's doing something very good. Now what I want to do is a local host slash swagger they're asking me to add swagger on my own so let's see which is going to be my this one okay they're asking me to add swagger yes all right not bad not bad at all that part was fairly straightforward i didn't face any challenges or anything it's still a little weird though there are some assets let's add that it's still a little unusual for me to look at it, but I got to admit it was fairly fast. It was easy enough to find all the material and things like that and so on and so forth. So it's working. I can see the swagger here. You know, let's put this on the left side and I put the swagger from the Visual Studio on the other side. There we go. Side by side. This one is 7077. This one is 7242 and then this is the one on visual studio this is the one on vs code i can do the weather forecast thing try it out execute it's the same experience go here try it out execute at the same experience so uh, there it is so that is really what happened so it was to me it seems like it is simple i can see you know at some point in the future i can already imagine just like how the xamarin studio was retired Perhaps Visual Studio might also get retired. I don't know. I would probably feel very uncomfortable if the Visual Studio goes away and I'll be forced to switch to VS Code. However, at the same time, I do. A lot of my clients will ask me to work on a Mac, at which point I have to do .NET and I am using VS Code day in and day out. So it's not impossible or anything. But yes, the comfort factor is always missing for me. But at the end of the day, when I saw it in terms of speed, in terms of everything, I would say the VS Code version is actually faster and so on and so forth. So I guess for me, I, I, one thing I think is because I'm older, you know, 40 years and all that, I've been looking at the IDE Visual Studio for so many years, I, I just got used to it. Okay, and on top, I like the age thing, the middle age thing. So it's difficult to learn new things unless I'm forced by 
external factors, I would continue to use the comfort zone. But new developers, you know, developers who, who were born in the last 20 years. So it's possible that especially in universities and boot camps and things like that, uh, their first taste of .NET development would already be through VS Code, in which case, you know, you can't miss something that doesn't exist. And also, uh, when I have to do front-end development, especially React.js um, and JavaScript, obviously, I, I'm, I'm putting those videos as well on the tutorial channel. So there I am always using VS Code. So I suppose at the end of the day, you do what makes you feel more comfortable. Like right now, I'm working on two .NET projects. I'm using Visual Studio all the time. Now, if let's say for some reason, I'm suddenly forced to switch to a Mac, I'm sure I would still continue the uh, the project just fine, but I would probably take a 10% or 20% productivity hit in terms of how fast I will do things. But ultimately it is what it is. So there we go, guys, that's what it is. So I was, you know, I, I wanted to do this comparison contrasting thing. And also, you know, in case you are on a Mac and you're following along with my tutorial videos, then you know now it is, you can just take my projects and run it on uh, VS Code on either a Mac or Linux. So there you go, that's all there is to it. Until next time.